market town of Chesterfield, a working heritage of mines and factories, now it's precision engineering, tourism and retail parks. The Lib Dems swept into power in 2003, ending a 30-year rule by Labour. Council leader Ray Russell is proud of his low council tax policy. The Lib Dems have 37 out of the 48 seats. The mood is against them, but he says that's unfair. We're arguing that we've had a really good record in Chesterfield. Lots of good things happening across the town. People can see them happening. A uh, new football stadium, uh, a new Queen's Park, uh, really improved down there. Um, all sorts of things happening. The Labour challenge is galvanised by anger at public sector job cuts. Leader John Burrows and his team hope to build on the current 11 seats. He accuses the Lib Dems of pandering to the private companies who build and modernise and take the money away. What I don't like about the Lib Dems is the way that they're privatising by stealth all of the services that are traditionally uh, set up by the Labour Party over 30 plus years of control, privatising town hall jobs, privatising the leisure services, privatising the golf course. They don't like the same privatised, but that's exactly what they're doing. It's currently a Tory-free zone in Chesterfield, no seats, and they're only fielding nine candidates this time. They highlight abandoned projects like this empty car park on the edge of town. But when the votes are counted, could they hold the balance of power? Last year, in the general elections, we doubled our vote in Chesterfield. Uh, in the west and Walton wards of the town, we are expecting that we, we're going to pull this one through. Uh, at the moment, it's neck and neck. We just need people to go out and vote Conservative instead of Liberal Democrat to try and keep Labour out. A town where the political makeup could all change the votes come in. Well, we can join Alison live now. Uh, Alison, local politicians often complain that local issues are decided by national policy. I guess tomorrow's unlikely to be any different, is it? Well, sadly not for the Lib Dems. They complain about that here in Chesterfield. They want to be judged on local issues, but they admit they will suffer losses. Who will gain? Well, it will be Labour in seats here and across the Midlands because they, of course, will benefit from that fallout from the Clegg effect anti the coalition. But how does the political landscape shape up across our region? Let's take a look. There are 66 councils in the Midlands with elections. In some, all the seats are up. In some, just a third. The Conservatives currently have control in 38 authorities, including two metropolitan boroughs, three unitary authorities, and 33 district councils. They have a minority control in a further five councils. Labour has control in just seven. The Lib Dems have outright control in four and a minority control in one. The rest are either run by coalitions or independents or there is no party in overall control. So which are the ones to watch? Well, in Cannock Chase, the Lib Dems have it by a tiny margin, and the council leader and cabinet members are up for election. Birmingham City Council and Newcastle under Lyme both have conservative Lib Dem coalitions. Will the Tories assume full control, or will Labour become the kingmakers? There are Lib Dem Labour alliances in Solihull and Broxstone. Again, lots of seats could be swapping hands, but who will get the upper hand? It's a straight fight between the Conservatives and Labour in Lincoln, Walsall, Wolverhampton and Bassett Law. And it's a three-way split between all the main parties at Derby. The independents have it at Mansfield and a strong presence too at Stoke-on-Trent. The BNP is fielding fewer candidates this year, but UKIP may well be one of the other parties hoping to benefit from disaffection with the government in power. And Alison, the Deputy Prime Minister and leader of the Liberal Democrats, Nick Clegg, chose the Midlands for his last day of campaigning, didn't he? Well, he did, Becky. Uh, he's sadly absent from any of the campaign literature here by the Lib Dems in Chesterfield. No picture of Nick Clegg, but he was in Leicester today, a Q&A session at the Chamber of Commerce, because, of course, there, there were four elections, the local elections, the AV referendum, the mayoral election, and... Uh, this is like we asked him what was his reaction if these results damaged the credibility of the coalition. You know what I've never done, and I'm not going to do it now, is to start playing this what-if game the day before the election. Tomorrow is an important day for people to ask themselves who is best placed in a local community to work for local families, to work for local communities.
Leicester, there's a parliamentary by-election as well, so four elections in part of Leicester, all to play for, going to be some fascinating results.